So we're working on getting the intake clean right now. Um, all these coolant lines and everything was already deleted when I flipped it over. So we're just gonna cap all these off and not worry about that. Um, we're also replacing the gasket on the IACV valve thing. So really the only thing I need to do now is wipe out these insides a little bit and then get this surface ready for a new gasket. And this will be ready to mount over there on that. We also have the PCV valves to replace. These are the old ones. So I've got new ones to put in there and they've got all new silicone hoses for anything that is left to hook up as far as coolant and vacuum lines go. Nothing's gonna be flowing through these. I'm just capping these off to keep dust and dirt and shit out of them pretty much. So I just cleaned up all these gasket services. Everything's looking real nice. So now that I've got all those scotch brighted cleaned up and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and install my new PCV valves. Got everything capped off, got my new PCV valves in. Now I just need to install the EGR kits. So let me get that installed now. So I got all my spark plugs put in because I just had them kind of sitting over here. So I put those in because they're gonna be hard to reach after I put the intake on. Got a beautiful OEM intake gasket ready to go on. As you can see, it's only gonna fit one way. So don't worry about getting it wrong because you can't. On the engine. I'm so glad to have this thing back on here. It's one of the biggest pieces of the engine. So having it, you know, off this table feels great. I am going to go ahead and take my gasket resurfacing tool and go down all these exhaust manifold services, get them all cleaned up on this side and on the other side, and go ahead and clean those up now and uh, show you guys what I got when I'm done. All right, I feel like these look a lot better. One side, there's the other. I hit it with my surface tool and then used some scotch right and then cleaned everything off. Yeah, so I got all these hoses on. It's like three in the morning right now. And I'm just kinda, yeah, I don't know. I'm just tired, but um, I've been putting all these hoses on. They sure are fun to, uh, to guess where they go. Also, buy the hose clamp kit. If you get the silicone hoses, buy the hose clamp kit. You're gonna fucking be pissed off at yourself if you don't. These are annoying as fuck to get on. You can see some of them, like that one right there, I barely was able to make it work. Might even have to go back later and push it on some more, but it's possible to make the old ones work, but holy fuck is it annoying. Make sure you put, you loop this through the middle here of these two hoses that are welded together. That's really annoying if you get it, you know, if the cord's all stuck behind here and it's all, uh, it's just better, just pull it out right there, so. I'm gonna wash this PCV hose right here. I'm gonna take this crusty ass hose off of it. And I think I've got a new one right there. So I'm gonna put that on after I get it all cleaned up and then I'm gonna mount it right there to the engine, to the intake, bada boom, like that. So I stayed up all night on this thing and I made quite a bit of progress. I got a lot of hoses on and stuff. Um, dealt with the fuel line. From, I had two regulators for some reason. So I went to my parts car and I got a damper from that. Um, I'm cleaning off the surface for the balance tube right now. Got new O-rings to go in there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean the balance tube up, and then mount that all up. Put this and that port on the back, and then I can mount this all up, get it all where it's supposed to be. These are nice and clean, looking perfect. Gonna go ahead and get these surfaces looking like that now, so. I'm gonna clean the mating surfaces and then take it inside and clean it in my sink. 
All right. Nice and clean. All right, guys. So, <clears throat> I got my motor mounts on. Uh, I forgot to put the bracket for the crank angle sensor on, or the cam angle sensor, my bad. So I went ahead and uh, got that on. Got those tubes on, as you can see. Got all these hoses on. Um, I got a new torque wrench so I can put that crank pulley on now. Um, yeah, I'm just cleaning some parts right now. Cleaning the little plate that goes between the trans and the engine. So I'm gonna scrub this whole side down and then show you guys what it looks like once again. Show you how worth it it is to just spend some time cleaning your parts. All right, so here's what it looks like after I scrub it. You can see all that grossness, all that down there. So I'll just show you how it rinses off. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty good. All right. I'd say that's pretty clean. Let's get the pilot bushing installed. I did notice that, I don't know if you can see, there is some gouging in here. Nothing like crazy severe, but I want to smooth it out before I try installing any, any new pilot bushings in there. So. so here you can see that gouging I'm talking about right there. Sure you see that. So I've got my engine on a hoist here. I've got a tire below there just in case my hoist decides to fail. I'll probably lower it onto that lightly. Like I won't set it all the way on the ground. I'll just kind of, so that way if it does fall, it doesn't fall two or three feet. It just falls a little, you know, a couple inches. So I've got all this nice and clean now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pilot bushing in first and then install my flywheel. And then I'm going to check to see if my flywheel holding tool works and then I'm gonna put it back on the end stand. I designed this flywheel holding tool and 3D printed it and I'm gonna go ahead and see if this is gonna be strong enough to hold the flywheel. So we are about to go ahead and see how this thing works. All right, this 3D printed flywheel holding tool here. Got my thing set to 174 foot-pounds. that boys boom well i've got these manifolds and uh they're really rusty and dirty and gross so i'm about to start trying to clean them up a little bit and then i'm probably going to hit them with some vht and then put the new sensor in call it good here is some before and then i'll get back at you with the after it's beautiful out it's like 65 degrees so i'm just gonna enjoy this nice weather and get after it my buddy's gonna be pulling up with his 350z later we're gonna be doing a drift switch on that so you'll probably see a video on that on my channel sometime soon so keep an eye out So it's still pretty rough looking, but I at least got all the surface rust off. Got those surfaces looking nice and clean. Just gotta repeat the process for the second one up there.
All right, so I've got these all cleaned up. I hit these with a file on some high spots that they had around the holes. Came out pretty good, I think, at least compared to where we started. So it'll look a lot better when they are covered in some high temperature black paint. So we are gonna run to AutoZone and grab that right now. I did notice there's just like some dirt and stuff. So I'm gonna wipe them down. I got some VHT or some primer and some black. So we're gonna toss that on there and see how it goes. And he is over there putting his drift switch in. So I got them all cleaned, masked up, and I also used some brake clean to make sure they were nice and grease free. So I'm using this primer and then I got the same type of paint in black for the top coat. Got them all primed up, looking pretty good. Here's my black VHT. It's the matte black one. So here it is after the paint job. It's two days later now and these are nice and dry, ready to be handled as much as I need to to get them installed on the motor. I need to put the exhaust studs in still, so I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, looks like I just found this buried in all the parts. As you can see, they're pretty dirty, so I'm gonna clean them off by just spraying some brake clean in here and shaking it around. And this is just what I'm talking about. I just fill it up with brake clean and just jumble it around. If I had a lid on here, I'd really be shaking it, but unfortunately I don't have lids for these. got this stud installing tool here it's got three cams in it and when you put it in there it tightens up either way you turn so if you want to take one off put one on that works so CZP Concept Z Performance it's where I got most of my part and they've done a really great job but on one of their listings, they had the studs, the ones I'm trying to put in right now, they had them listed as for a non-turbo, but they are not for a non-turbo. Here are the studs in question. And uh, the threads on the right side are a different pitch than the threads on the left side when they both need to be the same pitch. So the short side should be the same pitch as the long side, and it's not. I had to contact them, let them know that their listing was mistaken. They went ahead and fixed that and they are sending me some new studs. So once those come in the mail, then I can finish all this up. But unfortunately, once again, I'm waiting on parts. CZP finally sent me my right studs. Kind of irritated still that about the listing situation. So. Let's try this again. I'm gonna to try to put the studs in and hopefully this time it's the right ones. So let's go. All right, so I got all the studs in, got the gaskets mounted up there so i'm just gonna go ahead and put the exhausts on and torque it down now got those on and they look pretty good this thing is pretty much done now should be about ready to drop into the car so probably be the end of this episode and in the next episode we will be working on the transmission and cleaning the engine bay up so thanks for watching everybody